Hey, my name is James Nicholson, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Inflation has finally, 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 finally hit its 2% target on an annual basis. This is relatively good news. There's some bad news in there as well. There's some things that we need to look at because ultimately, if you're watching this channel, you want to know about interest rates. Is the Bank of England going to cut interest rates tomorrow or in August? I'm going to cover that as well, what the market's expectation is now, what do we need to be worried about in this inflation data? And I'm going to talk about what inflation data is expected to hit next month as well. So before we jump into this, as always, if you haven't done it already, do subscribe to the channel over there and hit the bell notification. We're on the way to 25,000 subscribers now, which is absolutely insane. And while you're here, let's get the message out on this video by smashing like, tickling like, doing something to the like. Whether that's out of love or anger, just hit that like button, guys. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So we've hit inflation at 2%. Surely interest rates are going to drop tomorrow. Well, let's cover that uh, and see what's going on. So the interest rate, uh, sorry, the inflation rate has finally hit 2%. It's taken three years to get back down. It's been a really, really rocky period of time for a lot of people, particularly people on lower incomes who've been hit so hard by this inflation in the last few years. It's been a 45 year high, which is crazy. Uh, and so the inflation is down from uh, last month, the inflation data was 2.3%. And finally, we are down to 2% exactly. That's a big drop. And I said that that was what was going to happen because the May data in 2022 was quite high for that month. And that was dro uh, dropping off because remember, this is a rolling average now. So on average for the last 12 months, inflation is down. Now, what's going to happen in the comments is people are going to be, well, my shopping is not down. And you're right. Uh, and so this doesn't mean prices have dropped in any way at all. It just means that prices have stopped rising at the rate that they were. Ideally, the Bank of England wants to keep the, the economy growing, uh, or prices to grow at around 2% per year, not at the 11.1%, which is what we peaked at. So the peak inflation was 11.1%. But it was worse than that, wasn't it? Because it wasn't just that was taking everything into account. And you don't buy everything, right? Flights, maybe uh, you don't maybe fly. Uh, maybe you didn't go on holiday in that period of time. So the real thing that hit people really, really hard was food. And so food was up 25% since 2022. 25%. And that's where you really, really felt it and your energy costs. And that's when people will talk about this in the comments and say, look, everything's really expensive. And it still is. It's still 25% more expensive than you paid in 2022. And that's not likely to drop. It's probably going to stick around that sort of level. And that will take a while for people to get caught up. Now, here's where the Bank of England sits on this. Um, we're not going to get comments from the Bank of England tomorrow because at the moment they are on a, a silence period because of the election. It's something that they have agreed to do for decades. So when we're leading up to the general election, they don't really comment or do any speeches or put any statements out. So tomorrow, the Bank of England meets. And realistically, this is their target, right? The target was 2%. We've been there for a whole year now. So why are they not going to drop? It's unlikely that they're going to drop tomorrow because of the election. Uh, and so they don't want to be seen to be political. The next meeting is in six weeks in August. It can wait, in their opinion. It can wait until then uh, before they look to drop the rates. Now, the market is pricing in that they're probably not going to drop the rates now. In August, this is changing so fast. Um, a week ago, you would be nailed on the August, we were going to have a drop. Now, they're saying the August drop is 50% likelihood. That's what the markets are predicting. 50-50. Now, September 
it's at 75%. The likelihood of a September drop is now at 75%. Now, I feel that this is crazy because the inflation has been higher. The drop, the, the, what's been driving this uh, and their concern at the moment is service side inflation. Service inflation, services, restaurants, hotels, um, hairdressers, web designers, these sorts of businesses. Uh, and so service inflation is high and that's their concern at the moment it's six percent why is it six percent well it's gone uh, at a level around six percent because we had a minimum wage increase the minimum wage went up by nine point i think it's nine point eight percent um that i read i didn't write it down i think it was nine point eight percent that the minimum wage went up that meant that businesses had to pass that cost on to customers so they had to put their prices on that's now done and that will eventually filter out of the service data but right now that is a reason why uh, there's something to keep an eye on the other concern they've got is wages again these guys are the ones that put minimum wage up now i agree you've got to do that kind of thing you need to help the people on the lower incomes that have been hit hard by the food inflation by the energy inflation and all of this kind of stuff but that is, you can't put the minimum wage up and then say, you know what, the problem that we've got with uh, dropping interest rates at the moment is because we put up the minimum wage. Well, there's different departments to do this. Obviously, the government have done the minimum wage and the Bank of England are the ones that control the interest rates. But it's nothing that's in control of the people. It's not because we're overspending. People are reining in. People are paying down mortgage debt. People are not spending on holidays. They're not spending on luxuries. Their spending is being uh, like squashed by these interest rate hikes that we've got at the moment. So the people, you, me, and everybody else, we're doing our part to drive this inflation down. But we can't control the minimum wage. We can't control... All of this stuff that has been a problem. So what else is going on? Um, core inflation. So that strips out the volatile stuff. Um, so core inflation is down as well. That's good to see. It's gone from 3.9% down to 3.5%. So a meaningful drop there. Um, that is really good. The inflation data is expected to drop considerably again in June. So we're going to be under 2%, under 2%. But still, the markets are saying, look, let's not cut, or the Bank of England is not likely to cut in June. They're not likely to cut 50-50 well, in August. Most people are expecting to knock on to September. It's really frustrating when they have a target of 2%. You hit your target. You've told us the interest rates have got to stay high, so we hit the target, hit the target, now reward the people with the cut in interest rates. One of the biggest problems at the moment that is fueling inflation is rent. Rent has gone up because landlords' payments went up. The mortgage payments, some people had triple, quadruple the mortgage payments because of interest rates rising. That got passed on to tenants. That meant that rent went up at an annual basis of 10% at the moment. That is in the inflation data. If you didn't have that big increase in rent, which is one of the biggest bills that everybody has, the inflation data would be considerably less than 2%. So you're putting the interest rates up over here, but you're not, and that's in, increasing your inflation over this side because rent is one of the big things. Now, rents increasing are unlikely to drop. So that is something that's going to stay high for those tenants for a considerable period of time. And that's their biggest bill. It's a massive, massive issue. So let me know what you think. This data is interesting. It's great to see that we finally hit that target of 2%. That is something to be pleased about. I do understand that your shopping bill isn't any cheaper. But what's good is it's not going to continue to rise for now. We've got to look at the end of the year, though, when inflation is expected to potentially go up again due to energy costs. Um, what's interesting as well is uh, Rishi Sunak's out today cheering and um, patting himself on the back for what a great job he's done on inflation. I don't really know any policy that the government had that really dealt with inflation at all. Uh, in fact, a lot of this was due to the pandemic, the furlough scheme, the bounce back loans, all of that sort of stuff. 
Uh, we printed so much money uh, and that's why we had inflation. Don't get me wrong, that did help a lot of businesses. But yeah, you can tell probably I'm a little frustrated that we've hit the 2% target. The goalposts are getting moved. They're not likely to cut rates tomorrow. We'll see. We'll do a video as soon as the rate uh, is announced. We won't see any statements, but we'll do our best to dissect what actually happened tomorrow. Do comment below. Do like the video. Share this video and get it out to more viewers. Go and check out some more content on my channel, including this video right here.